Hello everyone, I'm Yadagi Reddy and welcome to my channel HPI Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to talk about assertions in TestNG. So here I'm going to cover these points basically. So what is meant by an assertion and are the assertions mandatory in our test cases? If they are really mandatory, then how to perform those assertions? So these are the points I'm going to cover in this video guys. So you can consider this is like an agenda for today's session. So first thing first, what is meant by an assertion? So here, before I explain the actual definition, I want to tell you one scenario so that you will understand it better. Okay, before going for the official definition, we are going to look at one scenario so that we will understand what exactly the assertion is and why we are actually using the assertions. So generally in our testing, either it is a manual testing or automation testing or anything. So in our testing, what exactly we are doing? So we will pick one test case and we will perform some operations and at the end of the test case, we are going to verify some outcome, right? So every test is designed to verify some outcome. So based on the outcome only, you can say that, okay, the test is actually passed or the test is actually failed, right? So here every test should have some kind of a outcome, right? So based on that outcome, we will perform the validations. Then we will say that, okay, the test is actually passed. The test is actually failed, right? So this is mandatory in almost every test case, either it is a manual test or it is an automation test. So here in our automation in Selenium WebDriver, we don't have anything to verify like that, right? So let me tell you one small example here. So here in my previous class, I have created this class, right? First test dot Java. So in this, what exactly we are doing? We are opening the Google Chrome browser and we are navigating to google.com. Then we are entering the text HPI tutorials and we are clicking on enter. So after that, I want to verify the title of the page. So I want to verify the title of the web page. I'm able to get the title. Okay. I'm able to get the title using Selenium WebDriver. But where I'm exactly validating this one? See, if you, if you want to tell that, okay, the test is passed or the test is failed, you need to verify this title with some expected title, right? So then only your test will be validated and you can see that the test is passed or failed, right? But here I'm not doing any validation, right? I'm getting the actual outcome, but I'm not validating this with the expected outcome. So I am not verifying this one, right? So every time this test will be passed only, okay? So even though the title is actually wrong, it is not going to verify anything. We are not doing any verification. So the test is always passed, but this is not the way we want to perform the testing, right? We want to perform the testing by validating something. So we need to validate this, right? So for validation, we don't have anything in the Selenium web driver. So the Selenium web driver is not providing anything for the validation purpose. This driver.get title is actually returning you the title. It is an actual title. So you need to have some kind of expected title and you need to implement the logic to validate this, right? So that logic is nothing but the assertion here. So the assertion is nothing but it is an expression which will verify the actual test outcome with the expected test outcome. So you are getting some actual test outcome and you need to verify this actual test outcome with the expected test outcome. Then the validation is actually completed and you can say the test is passed or failed, right? So based on the outcome of the validation, you can tell the status. So that is what we are going to see now. So now you tell me, are the assertions mandatory in our test cases? Yes, obviously. So if you don't have assertions in place, right? You don't know whether the test is actually really passed or not. So always the test might be passed. Always the test might be failed, right? So that is the reason we need to have the assertions placed in our test. So assertions can tell you whether the test is actually passed or the test is actually failed. So to get the status of the test, we need to definitely place the assertions in our test case. So now let's see how we need to place the assertions. So for suppose here, I want to verify the title. After entering the text and clicking on enter, I want to verify the title. So how do I verify the title? So first let me open the Google. So I'll enter this text. So I need to have some kind of an expected result also, right? So if you want to validate, you should have expected as well as actual. So here, this is the expected title. So manually when I open this one, right? So I'm getting this one. So I want to verify in the automation also, the same one is coming or not. So based on my requirement, I should get actually this one. So this will be my expected title, right? So let's write that. So here I will say expected title. So let me remove this chair. So what is the expected title? The expected title is not coming from the Selenium web driver because the expected title we are giving as a user, we are actually giving the expected title. So what exactly the expected title is? So let me copy this iPhone Google search. So this is the expected title that I want to get. So now what is the actual title here? The actual title is coming from the Selenium script, right? Sorry, actual title is coming from the Selenium script. So that is this one. So here we are not going to print this and we are going to perform the validations. That is nothing but the assertion here. For performing the assertions, the testng is providing one class file that is assert. 
so here you can see we are having one class file that is assert so this is actually a static class guys that means i mean all the methods inside this class are basically static methods only so you don't need to create any object to call the methods inside the assert class as this is a static class so here we need to call the methods so what are the methods that we have so here testng is providing so many methods to perform the assertions basically so those are these things assert equals assert not equals assert true assert false assert null assert not null so if you want to compare any two values like it is a string or boolean or character or it is a byte array or string array or anything so if you want to compare any two values then you need to use the assert equals method so in the similar way in our test sometimes we will have the negative validations as well right so for the negative validations we need to use the assert not equals so we want to definitely verify the actual value is not equal to the expected value so in those scenarios we are going to use the assert not equals method so in the similar way if anywhere you are getting the boolean value from the website i mean the actual value as a boolean value so in those scenarios you can use these two methods for the positive validations you can go for the assert true and for the negative validations you can go for the assert false so in the similar way if you want to verify any object value like any object you are creating or any object you are reading from the data so in those scenarios if you want to verify whether the object is null or not null using these two methods you can verify the assertion so here i want to verify two string values right so that is nothing but the title of the web page so this is the method assert equals is the method so inside this the first parameter is going to be always actual value so here what is the actual value the actual value is nothing but the actual title right and the next parameter will be expected title so we need to pass both the values right actual as well as expected so now this one is completed right so i want to run only this test case so what i can do i can simply click on run from here so let me run this so the test is executed and you can see the test is passed because the actual title and expected title both are equal here so that is why the test is passed so now let me just change this expected title here so now let me run the test so this time my test will be failed so here the browser is not getting closed right that means the test is actually failed here you can see total test run 1 pass 0 and failure 1 so here it says failed test google so what exactly it is showing expected is this one but found so and so so this is the thing right but here we are not getting message okay it is saying assertion error and it is directly giving the expected value and what is the actual value right so some people don't understand what exactly you are verifying here right i mean here it says expected is this one and actual is this one but what is this expected i mean you don't know whether this is a title or whether this is a username or anything you don't know right so what exactly this value indicates so that kind of message also should be there in the assertion right so if the test is actually failed you should have a custom message so here you can add the custom message so after actual and expected you can add the custom message so i will simply say title is mismatched so now let me run the test again So this time I'm expecting the custom message to be coming in the console or report or testng result file. So this time also the test is actually failed because we intentionally failed the test by passing the wrong expected output. You can see the test is failed. The test Google is failed and assertion error and you can see the custom message. So what exactly it is saying? Title is mismatched. Now you will understand what exactly the expected title is and what is the actual title is. you know the i mean this value is indicating to title that you understand now based on this custom message right so previously we don't understand okay we don't know whether this is a title or we don't know whether this is a username or search text or anything so we don't know that right so that is why it is always important to to add the custom message also so based on the custom message only the end user is going to identify what exactly the value is failed what kind of assertion is failed so here the title is failed the title assertion is failed right so based on the message only you will understand that right so this is how you need to basically verify so in the similar way you can use any of these methods basically right so i have used assert equals you can use assert not equals assert true assert false so based on the scenario you need to use these values so that is one thing and next thing is so as i said these all are the static methods only right so every time here i am writing like assert dot assert dot right so i don't want to write like this so what i want to do i want to simply write assert equals directly so that is also possible if you import the assert class in the static view in this class then you no need to mention assert dot every time 
So that will be easy, right? I mean, you will reduce the code, right? So let me import that reference. Here you can see the suggestion is coming. Add static import for assert equals. So by default, when you use that, I mean, suggestion, right? So it is going to import only this method. So this method is going to import, but I don't want to import only a single method, right? I want to import all the methods. So I will remove that one asset equals and I put star here so that it will work for all the methods. So now I don't need this asset class import. So I just remove that. So now if I want to use asset true, so let me try whether I'm able to use asset true or not. Now you see. I'm directly able to call the asset true method also. So if you use only asset equals here, so again, you need to import the reference for the asset true. So like this, if you are using 10 assertions, you need to import the 10 types of assert, I mean, import statements here, right? So instead of that, we are going to simply import this way. So this is the best way to import. So all the assertions will be imported by default. So this is how we need to basically perform the assertions in testng guys. So as Selenium WebDriver is not directly providing the assertions, so we have to take the help of any library, any external library. So here we are taking the help of TestNG. So you can take the help of JUnit as well, or you can take the help of any external libraries, third party libraries like AssertJ or something. So as we are working with the TestNG, I'm showing you how to do the assertions inside the TestNG. So if you are working with the JUnit, you can take the help of JUnit assertions. So those also will be almost similar to the TestNG only guys. So this is how we need to perform the assertions in TestNG. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button and also share this video with your friends. So if you have any doubts or if you are facing any issues while performing the assertions, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.